The first piece of advice is that you have to find something that you are really passionate about. This is perhaps the hardest search most people ever embark on. For me, finding my passion started with science camp. Yes, that's right, I said science camp. I am that big of a nerd. I can't even tell you how much fun the non-Newtonian fluid fights with cornstarch and water were. <laughs> but I digress. The summer after my senior year of high school, I got to attend the National Youth Science Camp. And it was an amazing place filled with amazing people. But one person was more amazing than all the others. His name was Zun Nguyen. Zun was a brilliant guest lecturer. He was a medical doctor and postdoctoral student at Yale, and he gave all of us campers brain teasers and puzzles that kept us riveted for hours. One afternoon, while a group of us were going on and on about Zoon's brilliance, one of the counselors jumped in and said, you know, you have it all wrong. It's not what Zoon knows, it's how Zoon thinks. The counselor went on to point out that what made Zoon so amazing wasn't the facts that he knew, but rather how he approached the world and how he thought about problems. In fact, the most remarkable thing about Zoon was that you could put him in an entirely new environment or present him with an entirely new problem, and within a matter of minutes, he would be asking the right questions and making the right observations. And from that moment on, perhaps more than anything, because Zoon's name almost makes the phrase sound like a Chinese proverb, the phrase, it's not what Zoon knows, but what Zoon, how Zoon thinks, stuck with me. And it definitely stuck with me at the end of my freshman year of college. I was sure I wanted to be a doctor and had taken tons of chemistry and biology courses, which of course amounted to flashcards. Flashcards of chemical equations, flashcards of phyla of the animal kingdom. I'm sure many of you out there are glad to be putting behind you what was hopefully your last set of flashcards. But for me, I was memorizing facts, and I was good at memorizing facts. But I had this nagging voice in my head saying, it's not what Zoon knows, it's how Zoon thinks. Around that same time, I had taken an introductory computer science course to fill a requirement, and I found it exhilarating. Every week was a new problem. Every week was a new way of thinking about a new problem. I loved the logic of it, the reasoning. I was hooked. And then building on that, I found something called symbolic systems which was a major that blended philosophy, psychology, linguistics, and computer science together. It was the study of how people reason. How better to learn to think like Zoon than to study how people reason? Symbolic systems led me to artificial intelligence, then to a master's in computer science, which led me to Google, which interestingly led me back to some of my work on cognition from school. But through it all, I was lucky. I found something I was really excited about early. Finding something you are passionate about gives you a sense of purpose and is a big part of happiness. To find it, though, you need to be honest with yourself, observant, and make the most of the situation. Which brings me to my next piece of advice on finding things. Find the smartest people you can and surround yourself with them. Working with smart people means that you'll be challenged to do your best. You'll have to strive to keep up with them, and as a result, they will elevate your thinking. When there are better players around you, you get better. I first noticed this when I was growing up. I had a friend, Laura Beckman. Laura tried out for the volleyball team her junior year of high school, and at the end of the tryouts was given a hard choice. Bench on varsity or start on JV. Most people, when they're faced with this choice, choose to play and will pick JV. Laura did the opposite. She chose varsity, and she benched the whole season. But then, an amazing thing happened. Senior year, when she tried out, she made varsity as a starter. And all the JV starters from the previous year benched. And I remember asking Laura, how did you know to choose varsity? And she said, I just knew. I just knew if I got to practice with the better players every day, I would become a better player, even if I didn't get to play in the games. How does this sporting example relate to smart people? I deeply believe that the same thing happens intellectually. When you surround yourself with smart people, they challenge you to think harder and in entirely different ways. My quest to find and be surrounded by smart people is what brought me to Google. 
When I was looking for a job as I graduated, I chose my job based on where the smartest people